In the cutthroat world of Formula One, they are the team most feared. With eight constructors' titles, only Ferrari have tasted more success. For more than four decades, Team McLaren have innovated, developed, and most importantly, triumphed. They are Formula One's creme de la creme. And it all started with one man's vision. A gifted designer, a talented driver, Bruce McLaren started his racing team in 1964. I feel that if he was alive today, he'd be, he would be knighted like a lot of contemporaries, the Jack Brabham, the Sterling Moss, the Jackie Stewart, those people. Life challenged Bruce early when at nine years of age, he contracted a bone disease. He overcame incredible obstacles to, um, to achieve his lifelong ambition, which was to go motor racing. At 15, he took to the track and by age 22, Bruce McLaren became the youngest driver to win in Formula One. In 1966, he conquered the world's most prestigious endurance race, the Le Mans 24 Hours. The following year, Bruce McLaren turned the spotlight on North America. Built his own cars, designed and built his own cars, took it to the Americans and absolutely cleaned them up over five years. In the Belgian Grand Prix of 1968, he joined Formula One's most exclusive club. You would have to say that his win at Spa in 1968 in his own McLaren would have to have been the pinnacle of his career. I, I guess we didn't know any different, but the unfortunate thing about that era was obviously that it was extraordinarily dangerous. And unfortunately, when he was killed, that was finished as far as I was concerned. And uh, I retired and dropped out of it also. I just could not believe what happened to him. 2010 marks the 40th anniversary of Bruce McLaren's tragic passing. He was a fantastic guy and a great loss to most, but when he killed himself, testing a McLaren at Goodwood. In New Zealand, thousands of people paid tribute to the man who started it all. Running a festival for Bruce McLaren really was a dream going back as far as Denny Holmes' days in the early 90s. A three-day celebration of historic horsepower. We thought well, if we got 20 to 30 overseas cars, it would be pretty good, but we got 107. Featuring the largest collection of McLaren cars ever assembled in the Southern Hemisphere. If you look at all the cars that are here, that are McLarens and all of the Can-Am cars, the contribution that he gave to technology um, is incredible through those Can-Am years and, and into the F5000s, the F1 cars, and some of that's still very relevant today. Bruce was one of those very clever men that was able to produce stuff that could actually you know, go worldwide, which it did go worldwide and still out there today. And this is what the legacy is, is all about, you know, we wouldn't have the popularity of modern motorsport without these running and let people see how it was done in period. The Remuera Racer, a 60 minute tribute to the man and the cars that started a Formula One dynasty. It's great to celebrate a Kiwi that's been so famous and done so much for motor racing in the whole world. Amazing. I mean, it's the biggest motor racing event ever in New Zealand. We've had 110 cars from overseas. We know what Bruce did, but I don't know how many others worldwide would know that the McLaren Formula One team has its, had its origins in our very own Bruce McLaren. <laughs>